Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Let us turn to Mark Gospel, chapter 11, verse <coughs> 1 to 11. Before we go there, uh, let me open with a word of prayer. Father, we come to your presence this morning. Lord, thank you for, Lord, helping us, Lord, to worship you in truth and in spirit. Father, now, Lord, we read your scriptures and meditate upon your word. Speak to us, Lord, strengthen our faith. Lord, where we need correction, where we need reproof. Lord, speak to us, Father. Your children have come with various needs. Speak to them through your word. Encourage them, Lord. I pray with much thanksgiving. I ask this in the highly exalted name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm reading. The title I have given to this sermon is The King's Procession. All the Bibles, most of them, they have put the title as the triumphant entry, the triumphant entry. This is the only place in Lord Jesus Christ's life he celebrated in his life the occasion. You will not find any other place in his life where he celebrated. And this particular entry, he orchestrated, he planned it while he entered into the city of Jerusalem. He planned it purposefully to fulfill all the scriptures. If you have observed the last month or so, uh, the coronation ceremony of the king, which happened, and the the third to the ninth of this month of June was called the King's Week. This week, this particular portion what we are reading is called, it is starting the week, the Passion Week. It is called in the Christendom, the Passion Week, the first day of the Passion Week. Let us read from verse 1 to 11. I am going to read. Follow in your Bibles or on the <coughs> screen. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter, if you, uh, as you enter it, you will find a cold tide on which one has ever, uh, never, no one has ever sat, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord has needed, needed of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw, the cloaks on, uh, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and, they, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is, the, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. Verse 11, And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This very familiar portion, the Christendom, all the Christians, many of the churches, they celebrate this as Palm Sunday. This portion, what we are starting today on Mark Gospel chapter 11, is the, the third part of this uh, gospel. The two-thirds already finished. The last one-third is starting from the Mark Gospel 11. To hang our thoughts, and I have put uh, five different names. Either you can hang on them, or you can put your own notes. The Passionate King where he is entering into the Jerusalem with a passion for the Passion Week 
to lay down his life to redeem his people for the sins to be forgiven he is going as a king the passionate king and he is going as a king who is a promised king prophesied king who was prophesied about this king in the old testament by zechariah and he is a parading king he is planning his parade he is he is preparing everything to fulfill all the promises uh, prophecies the parading king and proclaimed king he was proclaimed as a king and praised king so these are the things i want to go over if you see the dictionary meaning of passionate king or passion of christ or passion what is the meaning is the one who has an intense devotion towards his work one who has intense devotion towards his work to complete to accomplish in the gospels it is written in mark uh, in luke gospel his face was set towards jerusalem to go to jerusalem he was dedicated to go and die on the cross of calvary his face was set intently to go towards jerusalem his face was always there he was very passionate about his completion of his work and um, when the some of the pharisees came to lord jesus christ in luke chapter 13 they told him go away from this place herod want to kill you and lord jesus christ said these words nevertheless i must go on on my way to today and tomorrow and day fo- day following and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from jerusalem he knew for a prophet should die in jerusalem and he would die in jerusalem he knows that he was very passionate about it he wanted to complete the work the last the finished work he want to complete there and he was not discouraged with the attitude or the pe- attitude of the people though pharisees did not recognize he was not elevated to the position he was very unrecognized though he was doing all the works of god he was doing all the miracles but he was he was not esteemed and he was on final ultimate journey and he is going to defeat the devil and the death so he is coming as a king a passionate king so he is a coming here as a promised king i am reading from jeremiah chapter 9 verse 9 to 12 on the screen you can read or go into the bible jeremiah chapter jeremiah uh, zechariah sorry zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 to 12 the coming king of zion i am reading from 9 to verse 13 rejoice greatly o daughter of zion shout aloud o daughter of jerusalem behold your king is coming to you righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey i will cut off the chariot from ephraim and the war horse from jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations his rule shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth as for you also because of the blood of my covenant with you i will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit return to your stronghold o prisoners of hope today i declare that i will restore to you double for i have bent juda as my bow and i have made ephraim its arrow i will stir up your sons o zion against the sons o greece and wield you like a warrior's sword this is the promise given to the people of israel through zechariah the prophet the coming king of zion before that you can see in chapter 9 and before that you see the judgments on the nations and here the hope is given the king the king of glory the promised king he was given the little these verses if you see how many things mentioned about this king 
the promised king, the attributes, the king who is to come, a personal king, the king for Israel, king for you and me, the question is, is he your king today? Is, me, is he my king? Is he your king in your life, in your heart? The king who was promised, your king is coming to you, and what are these, his attributes? He is righteous. He is the salvation. He brings salvation. And he is humble, mounted on a donkey, not coming on, on a war horse. And he will give peace. The battle bow will be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nation. He will speak peace to you. He will speak peace to me. He will speak peace into our lives. He will speak peace into our nations. His rule shall be from everlasting to everlasting. And he will set prisoners free from the waterless pits. Dear brothers and sisters, today we are sitting here because of this promised king who came into our lives. We were prisoners in waterless pits. You and me have been set free because we have come to believe in this promised king. And you know, you and me are the bow and the arrow in the hands of God. God said, Zion and Ephraim, I will make you as my arrow and my bow. Dear brothers and sisters, you and me are the bow and the arrow in the hands of God. This was the promised king prophesied by Jeremiah. Do you have this king as your personal king? He is righteous. Did he bring salvation to you? He came to you speaking peace with you, bringing peace between you and God. If you have not known this king, I plead with you. Come and cling to this king. About this king, before Jer uh, Jacaria prophesied, there was a prophecy by Jacob when he was blessing his children in Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 to 11, you, I will read. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is the lion's club, cub <coughs> from, the, from the prey. My son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as a lioness. Who, who dares rouse him? This scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from the between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall the obedience of the peoples, binding his foal to the vine and his donkey colt to the choice wine. He has washed his garments in wine and his vesture in the blood of grapes. Using colt and riding on a colt is very famous and very well known to the people of Jewish nation. Someone riding on a donkey, someone riding on a colt, coming into Jerusalem, they are recognized as king and messiah king who would come and rule his people, who will come and redeem his people. So that's why this, the riding on a colt of a donkey is very important. And about this king, it was long prophesied, even prophesied by Jacob and prophesied by Zechariah. So this was the promised king who is entering into Jerusalem. Now, Lord Jesus Christ is preparing the ground to fulfill these promises. I will read from verse 1 to 3, Mark Gospel chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt, find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat, untie it and bring it. So in this portion, we see Lord Jesus Christ as he is coming from the eastern side of Jerusalem, from Bethphage, uh, from Bethany, he is coming, entering into the city. 
and he is here consciously planning his ceremony, the parading, the parade he is consciously planning. In this world, you never see a king planning for his own ceremony, but the people around him plan his ceremony. If you have observed the last month, how the coronation ceremony, how people with a pomp, how much celebration they have planned, but here, Lord Jesus Christ, as a humble man, he is entering into the city to fulfill the promises given through the prophet Zechariah, and he is fulfilling the promises. He is sending his disciples to go and find a colt, and sending where, he, where they can find the colt. He is sovereign God. He knows everything where it is, where, in what street, in front of which house, this colt was tied. And he also told what their response would be. He also told what the, these disciples' response would be and how they would be sent. Many times we do not believe, even after knowing this God, even after believing in this God, we do not believe how much the omniscient God we have. We do not trust him much. We do not trust him enough. And he is borrowing a beast. He did not own anything on this earth. Even to do his parade, he had to borrow a colt for a day. Dear brothers and sisters, how much God has blessed us spiritually as well as on this earth. But our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, he did not own anything. Everything what he was given, even a food. And he was, to fulfill this promise, he was borrowing a colt. And he did all, he preached the kingdom of God for three and a half years. And he did all the miracles through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit. And God himself testified about his son. And still, people continue to reject him. The religious elite and the Pharisees, even after knowing all the prophecies, but still they continue to reject him. But one last time, he is fulfilling the promise, uh, the made through Zechariah, and he is fulfilling all the prophecies and publicly revealing himself as Messiah King, as the son of David, entering into Jerusalem. And he is himself doing this consciously. Dear brothers and sisters, here we see the colt which was no one ever sat on it. This is very important. For a king to ride on a colt, there should, it should not be ridden by anyone. That is, uh, that is a custom. It should not be used by anyone else. That colt which were no one sat on it by anyone. And many of you are the children sitting here, maybe not knowing, not seeing the village setting. You have not seen a colt or a young colt or a young bull, how much unruly they will be when they are untamed, unbroken. They have to go through a process of brokenness. They have to be tamed before you can actually tie to a bullock cart and you can use it or you can ride it. But the king who can tame it, he is riding on a colt which is untamed, unbroken. Dear brothers and sisters, in our lives, before we come to Lord Jesus Christ, we were like this unbroken, untamed colt. Many times, even after becoming believers, we try to behave like untamed, unbroken beast. You know, if you know the habit of donkey or a colt, they have a different habit of kicking their legs to backside. If you just go behind a donkey, they will just kick you. We tend to do that. We tend to do that more often before we were becoming, before we became believers. Now, this untamed, unbroken beast, Lord Jesus Christ is requesting to be 
taken on a loan for a day to fulfill this promise. And here he, here he uses the word, the Lord needed of it, verse four, I am reading verse four to six, and they went away and found a colt tied to the door outside in the street and they untied it. And some of these standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said to them. They let them go. So here the word Lord Jesus Christ said, uh, Lord needed it. So in verse, um, verse three, Verse 3, he said, the Lord has needed of it and will send you back immediately. So the Lord, the word used there was kurios, which can be translated as a law, uh, sir or master or Lord. But Lord Jesus Christ purposefully used that word for himself. The Lord has needed it, which could be translated as supreme ruler or the sovereign ruler. The king needed of it. And they sent that cold immediately when they heard the Lord needed it, and the sovereign one needed it, and the supreme ruler needed it. We have received every good thing from the Lord many times when Lord needed it, when Lord asks us to be used for his need, we try to withhold it. Dear brothers and sisters, how many things, how many, when Lord asked for to be used for his use, how many times we have withheld not to be given. But these people, they have sent that cult immediately. The next one I'm going to read is a proclaimed king, declared as a king. So what is this meaning of a king riding on a donkey into Jerusalem? What is the significance of it? If you see the significance of it in the Old Testament, I will read uh, verse seven, verse seven and eight. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it, and many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. The first thing we see in this verse seven, when the colt was brought, they have put their own cloaks on the uh, colt, cloaks as a colt, on the colt as a saddle. There was no saddle for him to sit. What is the significance of many spread their cloaks on the road and also the disciples spread their cloaks on the donkey for the Lord Jesus Christ to sit is if you see in one Second Kings chapter nine verse twelve to thirteen, Second Kings chapter nine verse twelve to thirty, it is about the coronation or uh, Jehu becoming a king. They then in, when uh, they heard that thus says the Lord, I anoint you the king over Israel. Then in haste every man of them took his garments and put it under him in the bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed Jehu as king. In the Old Testament, in the olden days, when somebody is declared to be a king as a ruler, the people or the servants, what they do is, they immediately take off their clothes, cloak and put under the feet as a red carpet for that king, signifying that we will become your servant. We will be your servants. You will be our master. You will be our king. You will be our ruler and we will follow you in your footsteps, we will do according to what you say. That is the significance of removing someone's cloak, even becoming bare and undignified, removing the cloak and putting under the person and saying that we will be your servants. By doing that here, large skies, for doing that to the large skies, these disciples, these people are saying, you are our king, we will be your servants. You will be our master. You will be our sovereign ruler. And they are proclaiming this thing, telling that following the Old Testament model, putting off their cloaks and putting onto the donkey and putting on, on the road. And the people cutting the branches and putting the leaf, leafy branches on the road to welcome Lord Jesus Christ, as if this colt is walking on a red carpet on today's terms. Proclaiming as a king. 
we see similar thing uh, when david declared his son uh, solomon as a king we see in one uh, first kings chapter 1 verse 33 38 and 44 he made solomon to ride on his own donkey to going into jerusalem and anointing him as a king and the king said to him said to them take with you the servant of your lord and have solomon my son ride on my own mule and bring him down to gihon so jadok and the priest nathan the prophet the benaya the son of jehoiada and the charathites and the pelethites went down and had solomon ride on king david's mule and brought him to gihon this how they used to do so someone riding on a donkey going into jerusalem and riding on a king's donkey is very significant claiming the messiah or as a king and what is the significance of lord jesus christ also entering from east entering into the city from east if you see ezekiel chapter 11 verse 23 the glory departed from the temple going towards east on to the mount of olives ezekiel chapter 11 verse 23 i am reading and the glory of the lord went up from the midst of the city and stood on the mountain that is on the east side of the city and we see in ezekiel chapter 43 verse 1 to 2 the glory returns again from east to the city glory of the lord fills the temple then he led me to the gate and the gate facing east and behold the glory of the god of israel was coming from the east and the sound of his coming was like a sound of many waters and the earth shone with his glory and the glory returned again from the east from the mount of olives in the bible the mount of olives the bethany is very important where the glory departed to that place and also returned back from that place and we see in hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 he is the radiance of the glory of god our lord jesus christ is the exact imprint and the radiance of glory of god he himself is the glory of god he himself is god and he is entering from the bethany through the east gate into the city the glory is returning glory is returning to jerusalem so the last one i am going to read was 9 to 10 which is praised king was 9 to 10 mark chapter 11 was 9 to 10 <coughs> and those who went before and those who followed were shouting hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the coming kingdom of our father david hosanna in the highest the literal meaning of the word hosanna is save us o lord save us the king who saves the king who saves his people from the enemy and this is quoted from psalm 118 verse 25 to 26 save us we pray o lord o lord we pray give us success blessed is he who, who comes in the name of the lord we bless you from the house of the lord so this is quoted from there this is starting of the passover week so there are various groups of people who is entering from the eastern gate from the east side into the city for the pilgrimage and they are singing these songs psalm 118 save us we pray lord o lord we pray give us success hosanna they were singing and they also joined with this group as lord jesus christ is entering the praised king hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord and also we see blessed is the coming kingdom of our father david the messianic kingdom the kingdom of god is not missed so here it is publicly proclaimed and we read in the other gospels and they try to silence the people 
And uh, in Luke Gospel, we see Luke chapter 19, verse 37, 40, uh, Pharisee says, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, these very stones would cry out. Now, many times we try to become silent. Dear brothers and sisters, God tells us, if we are silent, this creation, God's creation, even stones can cry out. We should not be silent in praising our King, praising our God. And you see here, I'm reading from Luke chapter 19, and he was drawing near already on the way down the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they, they had seen. They had seen all the mighty works of God and they were praising God. In this portion, what we have seen, the king's procession, which he orchestrated to fulfill the prophecies. We see different groups of people in this, the people of Jerusalem and also the people who came from far for the pilgrimage, for the Passover, and we see disciples and followers of Jesus came from all the way from Galilee and different places, maybe Bartimaeus and Pharisees, and we see a colt of a donkey, and we see the owners of this colt, and we see the king himself. For the people of Jerusalem, it was publicly proclaimed as a king. But still, they have not made, made up their mind. Some could be, they must have been just spectators and seeing the fun, what is happening here, and not made a decision to follow him. Even after knowing all the scriptures, they have not made their decision to follow this king. They have not identified him as Messiah. The God who came in flesh, the God who came to forgive their sins, they have not understood. And there were some <coughs> pilgrims, though they were saying Hosanna, though they were singing from Psalm 118, but yet they did not understand. Yet they have failed to understand. They have come to celebrate their Passover, but yet they have not known the king. But they have joined the group going along in that group, but not fully understood. But some of the disciples understood, some of the followers of Jesus who followed him from Galilee, from Nazareth, from different places they have understood, who are the beneficiaries of his miracles, of his touch, of his grace, of his marvelous words, some blind, some lame, some lepers, they have followed him. Are you in those group of those lepers or those blind? Once blind, once leper, once lame, praise be to God. If you are in that group of a people who of Jerusalem are of a Pharisees, are of a people who came for a pilgrimage but still not understood. You are still religious but no, have not known the Lord, have not known the King. I ask you, please know that this is the King, the King of glory who came into this world to die for you, to redeem you, to grant you the free gift of salvation. And there were Pharisees, the religious elite, but still, they do not want to lose their positions. They do not want to accept the Messiah, the teacher, the great king. And they want to silence those who are worshiping, those who are praising. No, there were people who were silencing the Bartimaeus last week we have seen. And there are people here trying to silence the praises of the disciples.
and we see the colt itself our lord does not need a war wars war war horse horse has lot of strength but colt is meek and weak and god wants to use the colts or the donkeys here i am now as a colt or a donkey god can use god wants to colt or a donkey but we would say lord you need a horse god says i do not need a horse i do not needs the strength of the horse if you are humble like a colt or a donkey you can be used by the lord if we are proud like a war horse we cannot be used by the lord and a colt or a donkey as lord was ri- riding the colt was riding actually on colt was walking on a red carpet all the all the cloaks of a people are the branches but the glory belongs not of the cold but the glory belongs to the lord dear brothers and sisters when god uses us let us not think that the glory belongs to us the glory belongs to the lord not to the cold not of yours or not of mine and owners of the cold itself when it was needed of the lord they sent it immediately are you and me willing to give away when lord needed it when the sovereign one leaded it the king of glory himself he knew that the people will reject people will not understand people will not know him the same people who cried hosanna will crucify him a week after in the same week but still his face was set towards jerusalem he was dedicated to complete that work dear brothers and sisters from the king of glory we can all learn despite of any discouragement the people may not understand people may discourage but still we need to do what god wants us to do never be discouraged our lord <coughs> fulfill all the things what god the father sent him to do he completed everything he finished all the works finally before i close i'm reading from psalm 24 verse 7 to 10 psalm 24 verse 7 to 10 lift up your heads o gates and be lifted up o ancient doors and the king of glory may come in who is the king of glory the lord the strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads o gates and lift them up o ancient doors that the king of glory may come in who is the king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory this is a, a repetition of the thing when the, when they were bringing the ark into the city from eastern gate one group of people saying lift up your gates lift up the ancient doors and they are asking from inside who is this king of glory the group is repeating the lord the mighty in battle and then the repetition goes who is the king of glory the lord of hosts the king of glory our lord is king he is the mighty one in battle the battle he has won for you and me the victory he has given for you and me over the sin and death the satan satan is a defeated foe so he is not equivalent to god he is nowhere near never fear about him dear brothers and sisters this is the king we have in our lives we have such a king we have such a great god as he entered into the uh, jerusalem he orchestrated and he fulfilled all the promises of god um, prophesied through zechariah and he entered jerusalem and went into the temple when he had looked around at everything as it was very already late he went out 
to Bethany with the 12. So we continue to study this. So if you have not accepted this king as your own personal king in your life, I plead with you, this is the time, acceptable time. You can come to him, you can cling to him, you can receive the forgiveness of your sins. May God bless this world.